You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today we have another exclusive interview for y'all today. Man, we're going to talk to a songwriter, singer, Michigan native. His his name is Jordan Joseph, and he is currently going back and forth from L.A. and Arizona. We're going to talk about his music, his music career. He has a project out right now that's brand speaking new called Purple Fantasy. We're going to learn about him as an artist. So first and foremost, I want to welcome Jordan to the show and say, how you doing? Thank you. I appreciate it. So, man, before we talk about your music, uh, let's tell the audience a little bit about yourself, man. Take us back. What was the starting point of your music career, man? What got you inspired to pursue music? Of course. Uh, my name is Jordan Joseph, and I have been inspired um, and called to music since a since as long as I can remember. Uh as you said, I am from Michigan, small town, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, both of my parents went to Michigan State University in Lansing. Um, my dad was actually a star football player, um, played in the Rose Bowl um, for state. So um, I've always had a family that set the bar really high. My mom has a, a doctorate, my dad being a star football player. Um, so I kind of came into a very dedicated and driven uh, family life. Um, my stepfather was a producer. Um, so, uh, at the young age of maybe four and five, um, as I was able to kind of explore what I wanted to do and, and dancing and singing, um, I always played around in his studio. So music's kind of been in my life for as long as I can remember. Um, the challenge that had came with that was um, at three months old, I was in a car accident that nearly killed me. Um, I was gone for moments. And uh, through prayer and uh, brain surgery, they were able to revive me. And um, the doctors told my mom and my dad that uh, I wouldn't be able to walk, or I wouldn't talk as normal, that um, my life might be a little bit different than a normal child's. Um, but I grew out of that, grew through it, walked through it. And, um, I played sports, I danced through school, um, every sport that you could imagine. Um, but choir and music was always kind of my love and my passion. Um, so I, I took the route of music, um, from Atlanta to LA, um, and LA is where I've been recently and working on my most recent project, which is out, uh, Purple Fantasy, um, and Survivor. And speaking of survivor, I mean, you survived so many things. And I did I did see a video with you and Nick Cannon, and that's a powerful story in itself. Uh, tell the audience, how did that happen where you had opportunity to not just meet Nick Cannon, but it was under a unique circumstance and you eventually had a chance to be in a studio with him and all that good stuff. Tell us about that. Man, meeting Nick Cannon was truly a, a blessing, uh, an amazing moment in my life. I had been in Los Angeles for about six years. And uh, through most of that time, I was working. Um, I worked at Equinox, a high-end uh, fitness facility, and I was always serving. So my last two years in Los Angeles, um, I lost my place. Uh, I've spent most of my life kind of searching for love and searching for a way to impact the world with love and kind of re-inspire it and tell my story from the things that I went through at a young age through family and, and physical tests and triumphs. Um, in the last 14 months, I lost my place helping a friend and decided instead of going home back to Michigan that I would stay. So I lived out of my car with my small dog um, for the entire four month, 14 months. Um, I thought it would be like four days, maybe four weeks even, but it turned into 14 months uh, working every single day at two jobs. I would literally park in the parking structure of uh, my second job after I got off the first job and, and my dog and I would sleep there. So about 14 months in, 
I had two friends from work. They happened to be brother and sister. And they they kind of found out that I was living out of my car and insisted that I come stay with them, which was truly a blessing. Um, and I accepted. And after being there for a few weeks, there was a, a moment I had where I was really kind of asking myself, like, hey, man, you've been through so much and you're going so hard for this music thing. Like, you know, like, when's it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Am I doing the right thing? And um, it took one email. Uh, there was one night where uh, before I decided to perhaps pack and go back to Michigan, I found an email that said like, hey, you know, do you need a break? Do you work all the time? You know, do you know someone who, who could use a break? And I filled out this email and I sent it in. And within 24 hours, I received a phone call from a woman who wanted to help that person or that friend. And after an amazing phone conversation about my journey and the 14 months I had been spending in my car, she literally was in tears. She said that she had something else for me, that she wanted to do something different uh, if she could. So she insisted that I stay in Los Angeles. I stayed. She said, go to work the next week. Uh, please don't leave LA. And so I went to work the following week. And as uh, I was getting dressed, literally in my car, changing for work, um, I get a knock at the window and it's Nick Cannon. Um, so that was a really awesome moment. Um, he literally got in my car. They made a huge moment out of it. Very special moment. And I was able to go into the studio with Nick and play him some of my music. And he was like, look, like, you're great. And we want to help you. We want to help you do your first EP. I want to help however I can. If I could get you out of your car, even for a little while or send you home, uh, we want to do that. So he did. And it was an amazing moment. And I got to showcase some music and really be a part of the team. And I'm still part of uh, Incredible. And I just released my first song and Survivor, along with Purple Fantasy. They both came out, Purple Fantasy being the single. Um, Survivor tells the story of me living in my car and what happened. And I think it's a beautiful moment to share with the world right now because we're all going through so much. I truly believe that everyone has survive something, uh, especially with what's going on in America and all over the world right now. So it really holds a special place in my heart. And I'm appreciative of Nick and his team for what they did as well. And once again, talking to Jordan and Joseph, and that's, that's such a powerful situation because going back to that moment where you said Nick Cannon literally just knocking on your car door like hey what's up but it turns into a very deep situation where he's basically just pouring inspiration into you and mm -hmm. what, what were some of the things that you took away from that and also just being to behind the scenes be around him and his people what were some of the things that you learned through that process because I know that had to been life-changing man Nick uh he's a, he's amazing um i was able to take a lot of inspiration from him because behind the scenes he's doing so many things from family to just taking care of himself and his health and and that but he's running such a business and he's connected to so many people that the people he he works with from tv to music they all have a story and he's giving people an opportunity and something I learned from him was like, Jordan, how bad do you want it? Is this what you want? Put your, you have to put your energy and your love into yourself, into your craft. And that is the way that you will be able to essentially, you know, save the world or inspire the world or, you know, shine in this world where you want to fill those dark holes. And so um, it was really awesome to work with Nick. He actually told me the story about, you know, before he became the actor and the mogul that he is, that he used to live out of his car and he would drive, you know, from, uh, I believe it was Oakland or San Francisco to LA to, to, for auditions and to do the same thing. So he really was able to kind of understand my story. Um, and so it was awesome to feel like there was somebody not just saying, hey, like, you're awesome. Let me let me tell you what to do or let me save you. It was more like, let me let me give you some advice. Let me let me show you what you can do to to build this this empire and the kingdom that you want, not just as an artist, but as a human being, as a man. So I was really able to watch him work behind the scenes and see what he's built for himself coming from a car and driving to auditions. So um, it was definitely a special moment. 
um, to be in the studio working with him, to have him giving me advice about my voice or, you know, do this or simplify this or, or you know, change change this just a little bit. And he loved the love tone in my voice. And um, that was really big part of it for me, because even though um, I'm growing as an artist, uh, inspiring that love through my message and my story and music is really important. So I definitely held on to those words uh, from him and learned a lot from Nick. So I appreciate him greatly. And now that you are still building your career, you literally are still pushing yourself, creating music, releasing music, marketing, all that good stuff. You are now in a new chapter where you're able to now reach people like you you now have the opportunity to get people to hear your stuff and not just hear your music but learn who you are as a person as you mentioned moments ago telling your story how important is it for you as not just an artist but as a human being having an opportunity to tell your story and to encourage those who may need that inspiration from you because you survive and there's people out there who are trying to do that as well. That's incredibly important. Uh, one thing I've learned my entire life is you can go through this journey giving and pouring yourself out. Um, but if you don't know how to direct that energy, then you almost take some of the shine for, from yourself. Um, so I definitely implore everyone to continue to shine, but to make sure that you're filling yourself up first and loving yourself first and, and put that love into your craft, into what you love, because that is what's going to ultimately make you shine like the, the superstar that you are, that each of us are. Um, so I definitely took that away. And that's really, really important, um, an important message to give to my audience, to, to those that listen to anything from me, whether it's poetry, music, or someone I meet um, in this process. So now that we have a good understanding, you as an artist and your, and your story, let's talk about the Project Survivor and also part of that project is Purple Fantasy. What is the sound like that you were trying to aim for? And take us beyond the scenes, the process of this amazing project. Of course, so Purple Fantasy and Survivor, they're actually two songs that were made while living out of my car. Um, what's really special about them is I didn't think I was going to be able to bring them to life, uh, bring them to light and share them with the world because they were one takes, they were demos, um, and they were moments in time. Thankfully, um, I've been able to grow through the journey and grow spiritually and grow as a person artistically that I've been able to say, you know what, I'm going to bring these records to life because they, they, pertain to that moment and that moment matters in who I am now. So Survivor is a sound where, you know, it, it could be used in an inspirational platform in church and to inspire those that uh, just need to remember like, hey, I'm still here. I'm I'm here. I survived that. You know, I'm in the present moment. I am OK and I can move forward. Um, it literally tells a story of living in the back of my car. There's even snippets um, from KTLA or Fox 17, where I actually was able to tell my story um, and you can hear it in the soundtrack. So what I love about both the records is they're layered. They're incredibly layered um, if you listen. So you hear different sounds. We actually put live birds, like actual birds, um, the sound of birds outside on the track of of Survivor. Um, for Purple Fantasy, you hear an electric guitar, you hear um, real breathing, you hear um, layers of sound um, and passion. So it's really important for me and my music to bring those layers because like me as an artist, like all of us having a story, we are built on those layers. And I think music, I believe music right now needs that. It needs the love, it needs the layers. It doesn't need just one, one sound. And I think, you know, music is in a direction right now where we can grow, we can expand, we can change. And so that starts with um, the imagination and, and pouring your journey and story into your music. Purple Fantasy is is about being tempted by life or love, you know, physically or passionately, you know, things that you maybe would give into on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it is love, uh, physical or, or mental or, you know, whatever things test you. Um, it's about saying, you know, what, I'm going to focus 
on myself, pour that self-love into me. But, you know, I can still use my imagination and in a dream, we can be this love. Um, so Purple Fantasy is a really fun record. It's a vibe. It has a lot of sounds to it. It really kind of dreamy and takes you on a journey. And um, Survivor tells a story. Um, and I want my music, all of my music that that I share with the world, I want all of it to be layered in such a way that it inspires anyone. So even if you don't like like the type of music, you like the instruments used, you like the lyrics, you might like the hook, you might like the fact that it makes you dance. Um, and I think that that's important in music right now. And the people that inspired me, like Prince and Michael Jackson and Chris Brown and Usher and those type of big pop artists really layered their music and they catered to the entire world, not just one genre of people. Once again, talking to the one and only Jordan Joseph right here on Army Focus Radio. And a lot of things you touched on this interview, uh, some key takeaways. It's number one, never, never, ever, ever give up. No matter how difficult a circumstance can be, but you are here. You're doing your thing. You mm-hmm. are you. You're beyond the point of meeting like Nick Cannon. You're you're in the hustle mode. You're creating your art. You're you're pushing your art. You're promoting your art. I mean, where when you were in that car, man, and you surviving? How did you keep yourself from quitting how did you keep yourself because someone listening right now may know someone or someone may be going through some difficult times like how did you keep yourself from breaking down completely to where you just say you know what i'm never going to do music man how did i keep myself from quitting just just being mindful and aware of where i had come from and i feel like if you wake up If you rise up with the sun today, yesterday, tomorrow, um, you're still in the present moment. So presently, you have overcome everything that you've been through, all the hard stuff, all the things you said, I'm never going to get over this. I'm never going to get through this. You did. You have. We have because we're here right now. And so there were moments when I was in my car where I was like, man, I never get sick. And I remember getting sick once. Um, I got cut with a, a blade from the barbershop and um, it was the worst week ever. And I spent this week working two jobs and being sick in my car, only having my dog. And I swore like, man, I, you know, God, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to, wh- what am I, should I just go home? And I just, you know, even looking back in this present moment, it's like every choice we make to stand and to move forward, it it alters the path, you know, and I look back now, like if I had done anything different, if I had went home, if I, if I did quit, then I would not have met Nick. I would not have put the music out that I put out now. I would not have the, the platform. I would not have been able to go home. I would not have touched all the hearts of my coworkers who were like, man, like crying to me, like Jay, like we didn't know you were, no one in the world knew I was living out of my car because I smiled. I pushed through it. I led with love and I was able to touch other hearts in that time. So it's really important to remember that you are not what you've been through. You are where you are right now. And, and that's what kept me going. It's what, what keeps me going. Those are some powerful words. Once again, talking to Jordan Joseph. And before we let you go, um, we have so many people who love music. Uh, we have so many people who love to create music. Everybody wants to be number one. That's just in their own right. <laughs> but you mm-hmm. as an artist, what what do you hope? I know I say I ask this all the time, but it's a very important question. What do you hope people can learn from you personally as you continue this journey and sharing your story with the world? Man, I hope that people take away that love is everything. Love is the blueprint. And I say that and I don't just say it for a slogan, but it, it truly is exactly how I feel. And I believe that we were all made out of love. And no matter how dark it gets, no matter how dark the room you are standing in feels, no matter how how dark the time and space you're in, wherever you are in the world right now, 
you can be that light. If you don't see it, you can be it. And and how can you how can you inspire the world to believe something or feel something if you don't? So I implore everyone to to always be that light within themselves and shine it wherever they go in every room that they go into. And I hope that through my music, whether it is the tone, the lyrics, the textures, the layers, the poetry, um, and every person that I meet um, or hear me speak, I hope that they're able to, there's a spark of light that goes off or, or is reignited. Um, and that's all I can hope for. Really good words. And with that, man, I want to say thanks to Jordan and Joseph for being on Ivy Focus Radio. And how can people keep in touch with you on social media if they want to just stay connected? Thank you so much for having me, first and foremost. I, I truly appreciate it. And to all those listening, um, you can find me on as Jordan Joseph on all streaming platforms for music and for social media such as Instagram or Twitter. I am at the blueprints um and that's with no ease for no ego so at t-h-b-l-u-p-r-i-n-c at the blueprints and jordan joseph on all music and streaming platforms wait there you go go check it out man go check out survivor and also check out the new single that is off that project purple fantasy once again yes, to- purple fantasy yes sir once again talking to Jordan and Joseph and like we say on every single show man y'all already know the drill man keep God first stay focused and peace